What is up, everyone? We are here today for our day two of our stream with Joanna. So big hello to everyone. Happy Tuesday. Yesterday was International Women's Day, but we're celebrating women all week here on Adobe Live. So stay tuned for some amazing women creatives throughout the week. Um, so a few things just to get started, a um, little housekeeping we got to go through. So today we are kicking off, this is week two of Daily Creative Challenges. We have a bunch of stuff on there. Um, if you haven't seen those, go check them out. We had the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val. We had the Illustrator da Daily Creative Challenge with Claudie from Studio Print My Soul. And then of course we have the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard Pinsky. A few other guests for this week. So yesterday and today, um, in the morning, we had B. Grandin Netti, who is a Brazilian director, designer, and animator based in Stockholm. Um, we also, in the afternoon, had us, Joanna and I. Um, Joanna is a designer based in Seattle, Washington, and she'll give an intro shortly. Uh, tomorrow and Thursday morning, we have Leah Jackson, who is a graphic designer and digital artist based in Manchester, United Kingdom. And then in the afternoon, we have Claudie, who is a visual strategist at Studio Print My Soul. Uh, we also have Doodle Therapy with Alice Lee and Anne Alonzo on Wednesday and Thursday afternoon from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific time. This week's prompt is to design a piece of stationery, um, whether that's illustrating the cover of a journal or creating a notepad or note card set. If you missed um, B. Grandinetti's first stream, check out the Creative Encore on Wednesday and Thursday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time. So here we are, day two of our stream. I'm gonna let Joanna give another quick intro if you didn't meet us yesterday. So Joanna, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Um, so, so excited to be back here again. My name is Joanna. I am a UX designer at Microsoft and I work in the office of the CTO where I'm responsible for data marketplace dynamics. And right now I'm working on something called Project Shrove. And uh, before we get started, I just wanted to ask everyone that is in the live chat a question. Uh, what is the operating system in my background? So if you wanna see like, if you recognize this image, just type in what operating system you think it is. And maybe at the end, we'll reveal the answer or not. We'll just leave it as like an open-ended question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you're in the chat, let us know what operating system is in Joanna's background. It's a pretty mm. cool one. <laughs> if you know it, you know it well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see Paco has has an answer maybe in his mind. Okay, we've got Mikhail, Windows XP. Is it XP from Morgan? And Joanna, do you want to reveal mm. the answer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is Windows XP. And I actually learned recently that this is an actual place in California. It's in um, Napa Valley, I believe, which is what the Wikipedia article says. And it's called Bliss. So it's supposedly one of the most uh, recognizable images in the world because it was used as operating system for Windows XP. And yeah. we're bringing it back today <laughs> yes. with your background. <laughs> love it, back love it. classic, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go Microsoft. <laughs> Anyways, so I wanted to share a little bit more about myself before we go into the, uh, the next portion of the design process for the Trash Tag sustainability app that I was designing on day one, uh, just so I can share more about myself. And yeah, so here are some things about me. Um, outside of design, I also really enjoy learning about learning. And what that means for me is that I enjoy the process of uh, staying open-minded, staying curious to new things. I think having that approach is really important as a designer and also just to enjoy your life. Uh, so you can stay curious and stay humble and keep on learning in different ways because there's so much that we don't know. And if you have that mindset, um, you can always see every challenge as a potential opportunity. So here's some of the ways I enjoy learning. Uh, like it doesn't work for everyone, but it's just something that works for me. I like to read and it's just like a way for me to learn new things and challenge what I already know. So this can be anything from um, books on ethics or philosophy or religion. Uh, it's just really interesting to me. And I especially like reading things that are on Bill Gates book lists. And this is not just because I am a Microsoft employee. Like I, I really admire uh, the work that Bill Gates does with his foundation, like Bill and Melinda Gates together. And I think it's cool to see people that have been so successful in business just go back to the um, philanthropy side and think about how they can give back to the rest of humanity. Like obviously, there's so many things that 
um, he could be doing, but he's doing this instead. And I think it's really admirable to focus on like health and poverty alleviation. Um, and one book from one of those book lists is called The Rosie Project. So I recommend checking that out if you have some time to read. And then something else I enjoy doing is writing. So I write a lot uh, because I have a lot of thoughts in my head and sometimes I just need to like stop thinking and just get them down on paper and then maybe like, do something about it. If I care enough about the thing. Um, but I just wanted to briefly show my blog on Medium. So I think I've been writing for about maybe four or five years now, and I tried to write pretty consistently just to develop it as a habit. And this is because I have a lot of bookmarks, <laughs> um, like from my journey as a designer, I always go on different websites, like I'm always looking for assets or resources or tools to go and check out. And after a while, like my bookmarks uh, just become super disorganized. I'm like, oh, how can I compile this in a way that is like valuable to me, but also something that I can um, compile together to share with other people uh, because I'm sure there are designers out there that are maybe facing the same problems I had or like trying to find resources for a very similar topic whether it's user research or like the design process so this is just a list of resources if you want to check them out um, I organize this about page so there's links to every single post that I've written in the last uh, five or so years and yeah lots of resources on here lots of tools uh, probably things that I don't even remember myself, but at some point it was valuable to me and that's why I share. So if you're a beginner on the chat, new to UX, you want to get into it. I said this yesterday, Joanna, but you created the most organized thing <laughs> for someone to get started. So well, check out this Medium page, um, medium.com slash Joanna. Yeah. Um, I also like to elevate the stories of other people. So um, I've talked to different female founders and just listened to their stories and their career journey so far. I find it really interesting to talk to people one on one because you can have like really deep conversations and just like there's so, so much richness in a conversation you can have when you really invest in it. So I like doing these kinds of interviews and just talking to people that I look up to. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, another thing I just want to briefly give a shout out to is like my own Dribble page, I guess I also post on Behance and Instagram. Um, my Instagram handle is at Pixotato. And this is where I like to show some of the different pieces of illustration that I've been working on recently. And lately that's been pixel art um, and also voxel art. So these are created using a tool called Magic of Voxel, which is a free voxel art editor that is um, very easy to get started with and also easy to apply different effects. And it's something I've been having a lot of fun with just to create different um, isometric renders or different like small, tiny modernist buildings because I like that aesthetic. Uh, yeah, so it's something I also like to do. You've got the full breadth of everything. <laughs> you have 2D, 3D, and then we're going to do mobile app design today. So yes, you really got it all. Uh, the very last thing, just you know, just random facts about me because I have your attention for now. Um, I enjoy playing music or like playing instruments in my spare time and listening to music. And it's just because I'm in front of a screen so much in my day job and also like outside of work and also during the pandemic, like I'm just in front of a screen all day long. So sometimes I wonder, you know, what if the power goes out or what if like for some reason the electricity goes down, what will I do with my time? So and that's when I go and uh, play instruments or like I sing, I play guitar and lately I've been learning to play the banjo. So it's just like another way that I can express myself um, that's not in front of a screen. That is awesome. What hobbies do you all have in the chat during quarantine? I know we asked that question yesterday, um, but Good let question. us know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been enjoying also taking walks. I think, Julie, you mentioned that yesterday. <laughs> so we're the same It's good there. to get outside. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. And also, everyone, if you are over on YouTube right now, head on over to Behance and join the chat. That's where we'll be answering throughout the stream. So if you have any questions for Joanna throughout our time together today, that is the place to be. Um, so jump on over to Behance um, to the stream and on the chat. Mm -hmm. Feel free to ask me any questions about design or uh, getting into design or my experiences being a designer at Microsoft. <laughs> like I'm an open book, so feel free to ask the questions. There you go. And what did we cover yesterday, Joanna? So we, you know, went through a ton of stuff, a ton of foundational work yesterday. But if you had to give a quick summary for everyone who didn't see the stream yesterday, what would that be? Oh, it's hard to give quick summaries. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so I talked about my inspiration being several different nonprofits, one of them being the Ocean Cleanup, which is an NGO based in the Netherlands, and they're trying to clean up plastic pollution from the world's oceans. So I was part of a hackathon that was partnering with that nonprofit. And that was um, some inspiration to think about what can I do as an individual to help uh, with sustainability, to help like clean up the planet. That's something that you and I both care a lot about, and I hope other people also care about as well. And there's another nonprofit that I learned about more recently called Project BB, and they're also based in the Netherlands, and they are also thinking about sustainability. And they built this beach uh, robot, which can, um, like, it's really cute. <laughs> it's like, it rolls along on four wheels, and it can identify cigarette butts and sort of clean them up over time. And if it can't identify them, it's actually uh, relying on people to look at those images and tell it whether um, tell the robot whether it is a piece of litter or if it's something else. And so it's just um, having these experiences, learning more about these nonprofits and what they need is that they really lack uh, the data that comes from partnering with people or volunteers. So this speech robot, for example, needs lots and lots of images of labeled data. And what that means is when it's taking like a shot of the ground where there's pieces of litter, it needs someone to look at that image and tell it like, using drawing boxes, like where the piece of litter is and how many there are. And over time with this, with lots and lots of examples, it's able to use that to train its image recognition algorithm to be able to identify those pieces of litter on its own. And I think that process of training um, is always something that requires some level of human collaboration. Like we tend to think about machine learning or AI as this black box, which is like independently operating on itself as like a, like, like a brain in a box, but it's not like that. And uh, whenever we, we let AI like go do its own thing, like I think that's when we start losing sight of like the role of technology and like the role of what designers can do because technology is so powerful, but then designers need to like be there in that place of responsibility to think about how we can join together technology and people to bring the greatest amount of benefits for the rest of society. So when it comes to working with these nonprofits, like that's what led me to the idea of Trash Shake. If there was some way to connect the people like you and me, Julie, um, who care about the environment and want to do something about it with the nonprofits or other, other groups that need more data to improve their technology to clean up the environment, um, that is like an unmet need that I saw right now. And that is something that I saw, like the, the nonprofit also was, was like thinking about and, um, prototyping with different concepts. So that's what led me to Trash Tag. Yeah, and I love the name. You showed inspiration yesterday of where that Trash Tag name came from, which was a viral challenge of um, someone picking up trash and then posting a, a before and after photo. So I just love, just wanted to call that out. It's a great name. Yeah, <laughs> there's <laughs> lots and lots of pieces of inspiration. Uh, but yeah, one of them was definitely the social media challenge that went viral. Um, I think there's actually people all over the world that did their own version of the trash take challenge where they went to some place in their local neighborhood, uh, saw that there was litter everywhere and they cleaned it up and they took a photo of before and after. And I think that is such like a positive and powerful way that we can use social media to influence one another and sort of stay connected and sort of like uplift positive things instead of, you know, just other things. Yeah, exactly. So this will be that collective action piece. So enabling everyone to be able to do their small part, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is um, the aspect of crowdsourcing and this crowdsourcing sustainability app, because alone, like just a nonprofit by themselves, if they had to have one person from their group, maybe going and like individually counting every piece of trash by a river or like counting the pieces of trash by a beach and doing that all manually, that's actually impossible. It's not scalable at all. But if we're able to decompose those tasks into smaller pieces for many, many different people to contribute, then we can solve the problem. So now I want to move on to the roadmap for the rest of the day, just because um, there's so much I'd love to cover and also lots of resources I plan to share along the way just to make this as helpful as possible for you that are watching. Uh, so yesterday we went from like an abbreviated version of research, which is not user research, but more like immersion immersion into the problem space of where we started. Because to me, in my design process, I want to make sure we're doing a lot of work upfront so that we're not building the wrong thing later on, which is very costly. <laughs> uh, so we did a little bit of that. We did some mind mapping, some basic sketches, and then we we're just starting on wireframes. And today I want to make sure that we're going to go from wireframes all the way through to high fidelity designs. So that's a very ambitious goal and we should get Amazing. started. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. We've got a lot to cover, which is awesome. So everyone in the chat, let us know which part you're most excited for. Is it lo-fi though finishing up wireframes or is it high fidelity prototyping? What is, what is, what are you looking for? Yes. So yeah, let's, let's jump into it. Yeah, we were uh, just about to start these wireframes. So I made a bunch of sketches using Microsoft Whiteboard and my tablet. And these are just like very rough things. No need to be perfect at this point. Just trying to get the ideas down. And I also downloaded this very cool hand-drawn UI kit, uh, which is built for Adobe XD. And it has all these different pieces that you can use, um, which are built in like a very sketchy style, which I personally love. And you can use them to make your wireframes very quickly. And so I was just starting to translate these sketches over into wireframes. So I want to continue on that process. Um, I already made the splash screen and maybe I, I should be naming my layers because that is best practice, but I'm not doing that. Um, this one is like the splash. This one is the onboarding screen because we want to have several different screens here that tell the user very quickly what they can get out of this app. And the user in this case, just keeping in mind, um, it is a personal like passion project uh, for me. So I can think of myself and, or maybe think of Julie uh, because both of us might do something like this on a weekend or like in our spare time because we would like to help and contribute to this cause in some shape or form. So here I was thinking about this feed screen. I was thinking that it's important to be able to surface what tasks the nonprofit needs. Like in, in this case, you can think about um, Project BB and how they're looking for images of cigarette butts and also for people to label and like draw boxes around those cigarette butts. And the reason why they're focusing on just one type of litter um, is because they want to focus on a very narrow scope of the problem and then expand from there. And I think that is really smart uh, whenever you're actually building something in real life, because it is my tendency to be way, way too ambitious and then try to do like 2000 things at once and then <laughs> not do any one of them very well. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's great to be able to focus on a narrow problem, make sure you have that proof of concept and then build up from there. And that's something we looked at yesterday was that competitive audit. So for those of you who haven't seen that stream yesterday, go check it out. Um, but that competitive audit, Joanna used that as a way to get feedback, um, which then influenced this design. So we know when we looked at that one yesterday, there were tons of different options for plastics and things that you can categorize. And so for this one, staying super simple um, with just cigarette butts was, was a goal that she covered. Yeah, so this Sarah, one Sarah in the chat says, I skip lo-fi all the time. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you, Joanna? Definitely. <laughs> I am, I am guilty. I mean, I don't know. I think at some point you've done that process many, many times and you just want to go like quickly over to high fidelity, but then, you know, there's always like a tendency to rush towards solutions instead of um, being able to clarify what the problem is. And I think for designers, we need to be both like the people that can show the vision of what the future can be, but also helping our stakeholders clarify the problem. So there's like a balance of both things. But our superpower is definitely like envisioning. I'd say like we are the ones that can visualize what that solution can look like. And being able to see that is very powerful. Totally agree. It's all about that balance. You know when to skip it, you know when to focus on it. Yeah, so right now I'm making the, the task here. So maybe instead of, um, or we could say that the nonprofit is looking like Project BB is looking for someone to oh, B is looking for someone to pick up ten cigarette butts, and then they might have some kind of image here. And we talked about having some kind of progress or social um, aspects here because that was uh, negative feedback from one of our competitive audits. That people are looking for more ways to feel like it was a social experience, which is perfectly normal. Yeah, I think you're doing something good, like you want to find people that are like-minded and also care about the same cause as you do. Um, and I, oh, this, this heart is like some way for maybe for people to favorite a project, but I actually found out something cool that like if you're using this polygon, this uh, polygon tool in Adobe XD, you can actually make a heart. If you make like, a, like the heart text shape here, it makes a heart for you. I think that is so cute, right? Like, Secret tip, I, I remember that. seeing that yeah. one. <laughs> Uh, that is fun, uh, but we have like our sketchy heart, which we're going to keep for now. And then I think because there's something that I wanted to try to, uh, so there's something in Adobe XD called components. So if you want to make like a repeatable uh, structure where it's like a set of type or images together with a certain layout and you want to repeat it throughout the rest of your page, 
there is a way you can group that and repeat it. So first I'm going to do command G to like group this as an element. And then I'm going to choose repeat grid. And then that changes my, like the boundaries here. So it looks like you can drag out both sides and yeah. So you can drag this out for the rest of your screen because what I want to do is show like a feed of the different tasks that someone's able to do. I'm just imagining that maybe it's not just Project BB, but there's other groups, maybe other research institutions or like academic groups that are looking for more images of litter in different environments and they need the help of different volunteers. So instead of repeating the same thing over again, it's like very tedious work. I'm just gonna use the repeat grid tool. And yeah, it saves me a lot of time. And I think there should be a way that you can also adjust spacing between these elements, which is super cool. It's a very big time saver. Yes. <laughs> which is awesome. And it's perfect for something like this, like a feed. Yeah. And then, so let me just refer back to my, my sketches so I can remind myself. Okay. So I think yesterday we also mentioned it might be nice to have some kind of variety, um, some challenge to these tasks. So you're not just doing the same thing all day. So then it just assume you're not picking up cigarette butts. Maybe it's like label, label 25 images. And this one is from the Ocean Cleanup, which is the other nonprofit. We name that here. And now yeah, let's move on. Um, so there's probably some kind of camera screen after you go, or there should be a detail page here because after you go into the task, maybe you want to read a little bit more about it, or maybe you don't, um, not quite sure yet, but maybe I will make that camera screen for now because at some point you will need to take a photo. <laughs> that is the one thing I'm sure about. Uh, whether or not we need a detail screen, I will still think about. Uh, because sometimes having too many steps in a process will make uh, the user lose interest in what they're doing and you don't want to do that so you want to make it as simple as possible and we talked about like the acronym yesterday about kiss which is like keep it simple stupid <laughs> just, just like keep it as as minimal or as like not simplistic but trying to reduce um, unnecessary complexity because I think like as designers we're like oh thinking about this person like they're looking at this this color this button and we just give them like way too many things to focus on um, and I think it's yeah just like how project bb is just doing the proof of concept we as designers should like you know sometimes be more focused in what we're doing and make sure we're not uh, giving the person too many things to think about or to focus on starting out simple and you can always build out more yes, if you find yes. that need. Very easy yeah. to add, very hard to cut back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have Jay in the chat who said, I hope I didn't miss too much. So what we're doing right now, just to give a reminder, um, we are going into sketching and low fidelity wireframing. Um, so Joanna brought in some sketches yesterday and then now she's translating those into low fidelity wireframes. We're gonna get all the way to high fidelity today. So stay tuned. As we go through it, we're pulling in from this UI kit. That is yeah. a fun one, hand-drawn. Yeah. What's I'm this taking, screen that you're working on? I'm working on, oh, I'm not labeling my my layers at all, just because uh, <laughs> due to lack of time, I will like speed ahead, like, like a bullet train. Totally. Uh, Honestly, I skip that all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. Naming layers is takes a lot of time. <laughs> Later on. Sometimes I, I do it at the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's important to do, so don't, don't do what I'm doing. Uh, but basically, I'm working on this screen where after someone is taking a photo of uh, the piece of litter or doing their task, whatever they're doing, they might need to add more requirements, which is just like additional metadata that the nonprofit is looking for. So they might be looking for the type of trash or the amount of trash. And these are things I learned from working with a nonprofit group in the hackathon and also just uh, reading up more information on their website. So these are sort of like stakeholder requirements or like client requirements. So just making sure that we're adding those details in here on the following screen. So it is this screen here. Maybe you have like that image of the, the thing that you took and we need some way um, to say like what type of trash and how much. So I'm going to just rename this what type of trash. Um, maybe like how much. Very quickly. And then I think from our research before, this was yesterday, just looking at this fact sheet of like the top types of litter that are found on beaches today. It's like the first one is cigarette butts, um, food wrappers, plastic bottle caps, bottles and beverage cans. So maybe we could do those types of trash, but I also don't know if we even need this screen because we have very specific tasks to do. So maybe I'll just make like a very simple version of like trash type one type. 
like maybe there is some free form free form task where it can be like just pick up this many pieces of trash and that is your task for the day so we can add some variety in terms of the things that we have here um or the screen could be just optional i'm not sure yet still thinking about it i say like we have different types of trash here that's what i'm going to assume so Sarah asked in the chat, I think Sarah was on yesterday. So thanks for coming back. Um, do you use guides, Joanna, when you design? Uh, I should. <laughs> um, I think I use them less than, than ideally. <laughs> but yes, there are guides as well. I will turn them on very, very soon. <laughs> That's a really good question. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how many people use guides versus not. I feel like it's sometimes for me. It definitely helps with, I think, as the fidelity of the design is increasing, but maybe not mm -hmm. at this point, but I, I think there totally. is a way, it's like the grid, right? It's the grid for every single thing. And it sort of keeps the, like the safe areas of where the content should be. So you aren't going like to the border or where people might find it hard to reach. And yeah, just make sure everything is nicely aligned. Um, but at this point, I probably don't worry about it too much. You guys are totally. keeping things sketchy. Um, yeah, so then from here, just moving on to the next screen. So I definitely wanted some way to celebrate the moment because I think it's so important to give people feedback to the actions that they're doing. And also, you know, it's like another way to encourage motivation um, as they're doing something to, to know that, you know, it, it mattered in some small sense, or maybe you can give like a note of appreciation somehow from the nonprofit. I think that kind of thing is uh, just you know, it's like non-monetary, but it's something that people value. So from here, maybe there's some some kind of image, some kind of like, yay, like, thank you for contributing. I am not thinking too much about content <laughs> design at this point either. Just trying to get some things down here. Like, thank you. We have a fun illustration in there eventually. That yes. photo <laughs> or an animation could be fun too. Yeah, I shared a lot of animal photography or like my interest in animal and wildlife photography yesterday. So I was even thinking like, is there some way we can incorporate animals in here or like wildlife? Um, I'm also really into emojis. So maybe some way we can have that in there. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Earth. Um, more clean. <laughs> like not sure how to word it for now. So what I would normally do is um, I might write some preliminary ideas of how the sentences should look or like my, my best guess, but I would try to work with a content designer. And if you're able to have access to one, that is just, they're so amazing. So yeah, rely on the people around you who are the experts, because sometimes you just don't know. <laughs> like I can try to do my best for um, user research or like content design as much as I'm able to and like the different resources I read up on, but that does not compare to someone that has been doing that full time for years and years. So there's so many titles within UX, UX writer, <laughs> UX researcher, UX designer. Totally. <laughs> There's just a million. We have Eli back on the chat. He was, they were there yesterday and they said, glad I made it for the live stream. Hey everyone. Hey, welcome back. Hello, we're welcome. super glad you're Thanks here. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> so right now I'm working on both, both an empty state and also a profile at the same time. <laughs> just thinking about how we want to track progress because I think there was feedback from people in the live chat who said um, being able to see progress would be helpful. And I also agree with that. We should incorporate progress. And so whenever you're coming back to this app, you're returning, you feel like, oh, you know, I've made some difference in my, in my neighborhood, in my part of the world. And that's like a very satisfying feeling. So I just want to make more of those moments of like value and adding um, like good feelings back for the person that's using the app. So this might be a name. Just gonna put like my own name for now. <laughs> um, centering it using the alignment tools. And I think it'd be nice to have more images of the things that I did. Like the, the images of litter, possibly. Like, I don't know if they'd be very aesthetically pleasing, but maybe it is nice to have some sense of the things that I captured before. So it's almost like scrapbooking. Um, I think a friend of mine was telling me about an app that lets you take a short video of like small moments every day. And I thought that I was like, oh, that's really cool. It's almost like journaling in a way. So 
it's it could be like a form of visual journaling, but it's for the environment, which is like a very good cause. <laughs> yeah, I did that one second every day video oh, like yeah, yeah, four yeah. or five four or five years ago, and it's it was super fun, fun to look back on too. Yes, it really brings yeah. back memories. It's hard to Where see like... change to day to day changes, but I think whenever you do journaling or like small moments um, capturing every day, you can see those changes over time. I like this mismatched grid that you're going for. <laughs> just different images probably of litter that i'm picking up and then maybe something like uh, i i'm overly ambitious so i don't think this would be an mvp thing but maybe some sort of level so maybe i'm like level five trash trash tiger <laughs> i don't know some way so i can add like a level of competition to this i think that'd be a lot of fun and maybe i am in the seattle area so i'll just add that here yeah, so something like this and then the very last thing i was just thinking about like how can we add animals in here? Like, I love random animal facts. So I want to be able to add like my own version of animal facts here. Cause that would encourage me to go out and, you know, clean up trash when I'm on my walk and just like thinking about all these cute animals getting tangled up in plastic waste or in like other forms of litter. It'll just make me sad. So I want to be yeah. cheered up by a cute animal. And maybe that can be my loading screen because um, there's probably loading states at some point. So. You add like a cute animal here and say like loading and then some kind of animal fact so just like animal fact tbd we'll figure it out <laughs> yeah so that's, <laughs> that's a good motivating factor for people i know some some folks on the chat yesterday said that saving the animals from plastic waste and all that stuff is definitely a motivating factor for picking up trash so and where do you get typically your images? I know you mentioned a few different sources yesterday, but what is your favorite either plugin for images or website that you go to for stock images? Uh, I usually go to Unsplash. Um, and I also know there's um, Adobe Stock. So Adobe also has like a great resource for different stock images. And I think I actually read somewhere that they have um, like a certain number of free images right now, which is like uh, very recent. Yeah. So yeah, definitely check that out. Yeah, they launched a free collection of images on Adobe Stock, which I mm. checked out recently, and it is, it's is—it's way more than I imagined. <laughs> um, mm. So it's awesome. Go check that out. You can quickly pull them into your file uh, yeah. if you haven't seen on the chat. Yeah, I believe there's also a plugin for Unsplash. Oh, and there's something that I wanted to show. I think the, the UI Faces plugin, which I might not use directly here, but it's so, like, it's so practical to be able to like quickly yeah. um, add in any amount of images. So right now I'm just making a bunch of circles using the circle tool. And then I went to plugins and I opened UI faces. And this is just for um, images of faces as the name says from different stock photo sources. So you can look, I think Unsplash, which is what I use most regularly, but there's also all these other ones. And I haven't checked out these yet, but I guess you can also filter by the gender, emotion, or hair color. Wow, there's a lot in here. Like by popularity, like I'm not sure why that matters. Uh, but yeah, there's just like a lot of different ways that you can uh, categorize your images. So right now I'm just going to see if I can select photos. And right now it's loading. But based on what I selected, it should give me some, some options for how, like for which images to apply to the circle shapes that I added. So I'm just going to select these and click apply and yeah ta -da. Boom. very fast very easy and there's so many options to choose from and this is like a really quick very very easy to use plugin so i like using that if there are faces which there will be at some point um, yeah so i guess i wanted to move on to some other resources so content design there is written content everywhere in in ui and these are just some of the tips that I picked up over uh, while working at Microsoft and just sometimes having to be the content writer when there is no content writer. <laughs> and so uh, I have these three tips. One of them is write like you speak. So I think there's like a tendency to have this, uh, like you're in your team for too long and you just think a lot about your own business needs or like your own technical constraints and you start to pick up like the lingo that is used around in your workplace, but that's not the same type of language that people outside of your work will understand. So for me, because I'm at Microsoft, sometimes we use a lot of acronyms. Sometimes we use like very technical terms when it comes to machine learning or computer vision. And that is not what people 
like regular people understand. <laughs> like that's not what they would get like very quickly. So make sure that you're not just writing for like your team or like the people that you work with every day, but thinking about that outside in perspective of people that are uh, maybe seeing it for the first time. And another I tip. all those acronyms. Oh, yeah. so many yeah i think there's even a term for that um like alphabet soup because you yeah. have so many yeah i love uh, these tips though i think this is really helpful especially because most people aren't content writers even though there are specific positions for that um yeah these i love these tips they're super helpful yeah you can also speak. share these with the people that might be writing the content for you <laughs> maybe you're working with like a, a partner somehow but they're also not a content writer these are just like very practical tips so the second one and the third one are kind of the same, but maybe I should have just combined them into one tip because it's like shorter is better and to get to the point. So people don't have a lot of attention, especially on mobile. You think about like most of the instances that you're using your phone are like very snackable moments. You're very like short. Um, maybe you're distracted. Maybe you're on the go somewhere. So you want to make sure that you're not using like a paragraph to explain what you might be able to say in a few words. So like obviously don't make it confusing, like don't artificially shorten the thing that you're writing, but you also wanna make sure that you're keeping it brief. And that's very, very useful, very practical tip. Um, so Eli on the chat asks specific to copywriting, do you think it's important to be good at copywriting as a UX designer or is it just kind of like a bonus add-on to have? Oh, that's so hard to answer, but that is a great question because I think when you're a UX designer, you sort of have like this basic foundation and I can point you to an article which talks about the five competencies of user experience design. And this really helped me sort of understand like what is foundational for me um, in my job? Like what are my outcomes? What, are, what do the thing, like what are the things I want to improve upon over time? And there's different ways that people see this depending on like where they study or like how they see their role or maybe like what um, what company you end up working for, whether it's like a large company or a very small company, there's just many different roles for a designer. But I found this article to be really useful because it talks about how there's these like basic pillars of UX, like information architecture, interaction design, usability engineering, um, visual design, and also prototyping. And then I guess from there, from these basic pillars, you're able to go deeper. So I would say first, it's important to have a foundational knowledge of these things. You don't have to be an expert, but then after that, maybe as your career progresses, you definitely want to make sure you have some kind of focus. So you become more T-shaped over time. And so when it comes to content design, I would say like, it's up to you. If it's something that you enjoy and you feel like it's really valuable for the place that you're working now, or maybe a place that you want to work in the future, um, go and dive into it and get better at it. But you don't have to. There's many different roles for designers. And yeah, it's up to your your passion, your interest, maybe your, your level of motivation to keep on learning something. Um, yeah, and go from there. Totally. And you'll, and you'll practice over time as you design and you're in a file and adding in just even placeholder content, you know, you'll get better just at that content design over time. Yeah. This is a great article. Yeah. Yes. Um, what else? I think, yeah, we tend to use lorem ipsum or like we use a lot of these boxes which have nothing in them, but I think being able to get to actual data is also really valuable valuable. And I think there's plugins for that as well, which I haven't explored yet for Adobe XD. But I'm sure they exist uh, where you can put in real data. And like the difference is seeing real data, seeing the actual content helps you to get away from just like imagining where things go and like be kind of vague and very general with it to actually putting something down that is realistic for what the uh, context might be, like either the context of use or like what the user is actually working with. Uh, that kind of detail becomes more important over time. So yeah, when you just think about like lorem ipsum, it's like two words. It's like a very specific length and there's no variety. And that is not what real life is like. So <laughs> yeah, try to get to real data and ask the people that you're working with for real data if possible. Let's see. So I was saying I was using Unsplash. And so I went on Unsplash and I just searched trash and I was just pulling different images. Um, and I was also pulling images from the trash tape challenge just because I wanted to refer to that and maybe like the about page for this app in the future. And so I have these different images I have in mind to go in the onboarding screens or maybe elsewhere in the app. And I was also pulling icons from fontawesome.com. 
uh, they have so many different icons there. And so I was just pulling things for the types of litter that we might find on the beach. This was thinking about let's see, this screen before, maybe it could go here. And then oh, one idea that I had is I really like um, animals. So I wanted to incorporate more animals into the app rather than using people's faces. So maybe there could be some way that instead of using like a profile picture, we could just have like a, a cute animal and you could be part of a team of like fishes or you could be like a team of, of like kiwi birds. Or like, I don't know, just this would be something that's kind of fun. And so you can get like that social aspect of it. And if you're more like me, I like, I think I'm more privacy conscious. So um, I just don't always want to share images of myself on different platforms in case like whatever hack happens. So yeah, this is just something I wanted to keep in mind. And I also found these cool icons. It was on Dribble. It was a free set by um, a pair of designers. I think they have their own studio. And yeah, I just thought they were really cool. Wanted to keep them in mind to maybe use for the app. And then colors. So just wanted to give a shout out to this, this tool, which is called Coolers. I don't think I've ever said that word, but it is yeah. a really awesome color palette generator tool. And they have a lot of trending palettes that you can go and look up and just see like what is like the cool thing people are using now for these modern websites. Um, and there's so many to choose from. And there's also a generator. So I think I was just playing around with this maybe a few weeks ago and just see if we can click on one of these. So you can click on these three dots, click on open in generator, and it should open up the palette again. And so pretty sure if, like click space you can generate new color palettes but if you like maybe a certain set of colors you can lock them down and then just change things around them so as an example i'm just going to say like maybe i like this bright pink and i like this purple but i don't like the other things i'm just going to like lock them down first and then keep on clicking space until i like more of these and i like bright saturated colors just because yesterday i mentioned that i like the um, there's a game that was inspiring for me for this, which was like this little cute person uh, rolling around like a bottle of trash. This game is called Katamari de Macy, I believe. It's like a Japanese game. And so I'm just like trying to go off that uh, poppy color vibe. So just looking for some things that are like very bright and energetic. Um, I don't know. That pink is almost <laughs> like the XD pink, you know, the little, that color. I love it. Mm, there's also shades here too so there's like there's a lot of things you can do with this tool and after you like your palette you're also able to copy the hex codes um, or add more palettes add more colors to your palette if you want to and it's just a great tool so recommend checking this out if you're looking for color palettes or looking for inspiration uh, yeah so anyone if you just joined us today we were just looking at color palettes we went through some um, low fidelity wireframing and now Joanna is pulling in some colors and icons um, for the trash tag app that we're designing today. So that's where we're at currently. And what what are we gonna be doing next within here? Uh, well, we are pulling together some assets just so we can be prepared and um, on time for the stream. And so I was also pulling in some social icons just because I mentioned yesterday for a login screen, you want to make sure that people have alternative ways to log in. So we're not just forcing them to do this one thing that like they must do, which is a barrier to accessing the app itself. So always give them the option to do things multiple ways so it's more flexible. Maybe give them the option to skip logging in if they don't want to. Um, I just made like a very quick set of of type ramps, just like trying to pull things together. And then also animal facts. I mentioned that I like animals, I like facts. So I was just going on a website and looking up different animal facts, like how baby owls sleep with their face down. I don't know if you've ever seen that oh. image, Julie, but it's very cute. <laughs> it's just like, I have up. not. Yeah. Oh man, I need to. Mm -hmm. Well, they just sleep like, you know, like exactly I mean, like this. And it's because their head snail. is very heavy. <laughs> yeah. The snail can sleep for three years at a time. Oh, yeah, man. I wish I was a snail sometimes. <laughs> you would have missed this whole pandemic if you did that. <laughs> yeah. Slept through it all. Um, I, I, Raphael has a question on the chat related to what we're doing right now. So do you usually set up a style guide before high fidelity mockups or during or after? Uh, I think it would be both before during and after, if I'm completely Keep honest. Keep adjusting. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would like to have a restricted type ramp just so your dev does not go crazy as they're implementing like all these different styles. But sometimes you're just missing something and you need to add that during the process. And yeah, you do make adjustments over time. So like I would say, start out with some some basic things like, you know, like you're probably going to need some heading, like body copy, captions, things like that. But then over time, you're going to make that more robust as your system gets more flexible. So I don't know. It's it's not a set answer. <laughs> I apologize. But uh, I think that's important. I mean, this is a personal app, right? So you're starting fully from scratch. You don't have a design mm. system or any guidelines. Um, so it really does depend. So if you start out with something simple and then build it up over time, I think that I think that works great. Yeah, and if you're looking for some reference for starting a type wrap, just because it's mobile design, you can always go to like the Apple iOS, um, like those guidelines or like look at material design and see like what their ramp recommendations are, because from there you're able to sort of adjust uh, for what works best for you, while also keeping in mind like what might be best practices based on the platform. So there's that. And then I also just pulled some emojis because I mentioned before I love emojis. So like, and maybe like we can make a snail fact with like a cute snail or like make like a, a hippo fact with, like because they have pink sweat, have like a hippo there. I think it'd be a lot of fun. And my question for the people in the live chat is like, what is your favorite random fact? So it could be an animal fact. It could just be like something random that you know. Um, I like random facts, so <laughs> feel free to share. Yeah. I have to think of that one. I don't know <laughs> what my random fact would be. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I did not know this, but a catfish has taste buds around their body. And I'm just like, not sure why that is, but just entertaining. Yeah, that is yeah. weird. And then the pink sweat <laughs> for hippos too. Huh. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're in the chat, let us know what your favorite random fact is. I think everyone can learn a little bit today <laughs> from that. I'm sure everyone has some, some really interesting ones. So let us know. Yes. Okay, so from the color generator, I just remember I was choosing some very saturated colors just because I wanted to keep things you know, keep things light because sometimes thinking too much about how the world is getting polluted can be like a dark and depressing moment. <laughs> so just keeping that more light. And then I was also um, using my content writing tips from before to think about what content might fill in these screens. And I, yes, I also zoomed ahead just for the sake of time um, because I want to get through eventually to prototyping. And yeah, so I just made the wireframes from before a little bit more polished. And then I started thinking about the content because again, it's important to not just work with lorem ipsum, but think about what might, the, like what actual content might be filling up these spaces over time. So I have um, this first splash screen, which is more like a welcome page. And this is not just something I thought about on the spot. Like I thought about this for at least a few days. So yeah, don't think that I'm just writing this from scratch and um, not editing it or not changing it over time. So I was just, thinking that this is a welcome screen, so you want to welcome people and explain to them what it is. So you just wrote something like this, like you can help protect the planet by taking your trash. And then like, these are the people that are benefiting. So maybe researchers, a nonprofit group or policymakers who need more insight um, to build better solutions or to invest their resources in a more efficient way. And then from here on this onboarding screen, again, we want to tell the users what they're getting in terms of value from this app. So we are explaining to them that they need to take a good photo of the trash. You know, they're using their phone, they're out on like a beach somewhere to take a good photo, make sure the photo is sharp, bright and focused. Maybe they're gonna add some details based on what the requirements from the nonprofit are. So maybe that is like the type of trash or the amount of trash that they're observing. And then, yeah, we would love to have people also clean up the trash, but that is not a requirement. Like that's not something we can enforce with a mobile app, um, but we can, mention it, hopefully they'll do it out of the goodness of, um, of their own heart and like whether they feel motivated to in that moment. So they're able to clean up by themselves or maybe in a group. And then it's part of a larger movement. So you don't think about it as you doing this on your own, but maybe you're joining like a larger cause, which is, you know, something that everyone should care about. It's making sure that the planet is healthy and that we're keeping it clean and well for future generations. So this is almost a step-by-step -step, like onboarding in a way where yes. it shows you what you can do with the app. So are you imagining almost like a swiping motion for those three? Yes, I carousel? am. Yes, with the carousel awesome. here. And I think for inspiration, um, I mentioned this resource yesterday, but I just wanted to give it a shout out again for uh, Mobin. So it is a mobile app collection website where you can quickly see lots of patterns from different apps and 
while you can download your favorite apps or like look at competitor apps on your own phone or just see what works well for the apps that you enjoy. I like being able to quickly see uh, like what are the latest app designs like, like how are people approaching different problems around um, the design of onboarding, for example. So we are working on onboarding right now. So we can go over to this filters tab and we can say maybe something like, you know, maybe we want like a guided tour for like explaining to people how to do something. So we can look at different examples um, from all sorts of different apps and just see how they approach the same problem. Like this is just something that I might do if I feel like I'm stuck or I just want to know what's um, like the more modern apps are doing. And yeah, this is a really good resource as well. So this is a bunch of splash screens, which tend to just be the logo. Uh, so different login screens. This is definitely going to really enhance my workflow because I used to just go through all the apps I could think of and check out what they were doing. So this really aggregates it all together, which is awesome. Yeah. And even for things like, you know, I just care about cards and you can look at examples of cards for lots and lots of different apps, or maybe you just care about cards for finance apps for some reason, because that's like what you work on. So yeah, that's just another way that you can find inspiration and yeah so from here um again like let's see I think I was thinking about the navigation and maybe I was being overly ambitious because that is also my tendency so I was thinking like okay so we're gonna have multiple things here and we want to make sure that we're encouraging people to take a photo of the trash where they are um, and just label wherever they are but I don't know if that is the right thing yet but that was just my natural inclination is to just like make one action more prominent than the other ones. So this one might open up the camera um, and just, you know, um, maybe there's just one task for the day and you just wanna get people to open up the camera as, as fast as possible, pass, as possible when they get to that point when they need to take a photo. So that was the thought that I had for this nav bar. And then I was also thinking like, what are these other pages for the rest of this app? So maybe there is some kind of home page where you can see a showcase of those different tasks maybe some way to have um, labeling. So maybe after you've taken a photo of these images, if there's some way to draw a bounding box around them, um, some way to have upcoming events. And I was thinking about this pre-COVID. <laughs> so I've been working, like thinking about this project for a while now. And I was like, oh, you know, there's like meetup.com and different places where people can come together around the shared interest. Maybe it'd be nice to have like a way to find like-minded individuals to clean up trash together. And nowadays, uh, maybe that's a little bit harder to do, but I'm sure in the post-pandemic world, there'll like always be a need for people to feel connected and like they're doing something fun together. So I think including this somehow, but maybe you know, encouraging social distancing is important. And profile, yeah, we want to have some way for you to track your impact. So I have like, you know, something here where you can see um, your profile, maybe like some kind of level in the future when we add gamification and then more images of things that you took before. And so from here, I was also going even beyond, which I don't know if ne is necessary for MVP, which is probably not, but I was thinking, okay, maybe there's some kind of sharing page here where I can um, have a confirmation for the action that I just did. So maybe I did finish my task for the day, which is to pick up um, 10 cigarette butts from a beach nearby. So maybe after that, I have that celebration page that that happy moment where we're celebrating what the user just accomplished, but there's also a way to share that. Then it can be more like how social media um, has these challenges where you're not just doing an action, but you're challenging a friend or someone you know to do that same action. And I think that would be like almost like a ripple effect of something positive. So I was thinking about how we can incorporate that. Uh, maybe a way to challenge a friend and like bring in some friendly competition here. And this was the feedback from an unhappy user for a competitor's app. And there's to say like, oh, is there some way to have group chat? So I just want to jot that down so I don't forget it. Um, maybe a way to add more photos. So maybe you took a photo of one piece of litter, but then you see all around you, there's many more pieces of litter and you want to just quickly capture multiple at a time. Uh, that could be some way to make the task more efficient for you. Um, and yeah, I was just thinking again, like what is the outcome of what we're trying to do with this app? We would like to encourage people to pick up the trash, but maybe we can't enforce that. So I don't know if we can always, you know, get people to go and like physically pick up 
the cigarette butt, but we can help um, the nonprofit groups or we can help the different research groups build a trash data sets that they need in order to make their technology work better. So this one is probably the more realistic outcome. And this was like, one is like nice to have. Okay. I love how you listed everything out, even as you go, you know, cause you can always come back to this and keep building it out. So yeah, I love how you have that. I'm very it's forgetful. Like your, it's like your jogging notebook <laughs> in the mm-hmm. file. Uh, so from here, I guess you want to go to um, start going from lo-fi to medium-fi to hi-fi. And yeah, so from here, we have our category, which I just want to call this onboarding. So I'm not so disorganized. And then from here, we want to have a welcome screen. So uh, maybe we'll just use some placeholder for now because I'm not quite sure what what the logo should be for this yet. I'm still thinking about what the logo could be and then I'm just gonna you know take my copy and think about how it might be placed here oh I guess I will use this here I'm just like reusing the copy that I've been writing above welcome and then adding in some of this title over here I don't know how I feel. That looks really, really bold. So I think I used the wrong thing. I'm gonna use my body. Oh, why is it still bold? I think this one is regular. So I'm gonna choose this drop down here and make it regular. Nice. So this is the first onboarding screen that we're working on, right? Yes, this is the, the very first screen. Um, I don't know if we need too much more than that. Maybe you can move on to the splash or like the the guided flow where we talking, where we are talking the about the carousel and the first three steps. So we have some images here. I'm just going to take that image and put it here. Mm. Will in the chat has an idea for a section about safety tips while cleaning up trash, mm. such as thick gloves, proper footwear, or safety vests. And then they included a resource as well. That's a really, really oh. good idea. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, <laughs> very important. We got to add that to yeah. the list that you have over there in the corner. I will add that. And then Eli said, Joanna's process is very structured and pragmatic. That's what I call trusting the process. I love that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Compliments are welcome. Um, I remember like a coworker telling me like, oh, constructive compliments or like <laughs> instead of feedback. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. a good term. I have to use that one more often. Yes. Yeah, it's not else? just like you're doing a great job. It's like, <laughs> this is why you're doing a great job. That's awesome. And then Sarah says on the confirmation page, maybe a selection of cards for the user to screenshot that has spaces for them to tag their friends. That's cool. Oh. That's a good idea as well. Oh, that is a great idea. Yeah, should be. I, I always need this kind of feedback when I'm working. So so good to have like <laughs> another pair of eyes. Um, yeah, I think that's like the benefit of working in like a design studio where you're around other designers a lot. Sorry, I'm just like mess. I, I can't focus on two things at once. So like when you're in a design <laughs> studio, you're able to quickly get other people's feedback right away. And you can just turn around, like ask for feedback. And I think that's a lot harder if you're only like the only designer in a space or maybe you're just like getting started. Um, so always try to find like someone else that you can bounce off your ideas with. That is very helpful and something I should be doing more often. It's hard, especially in a remote world that we're in. Yeah, it's um, get a little bit bigger, like kind of, like kind of finessing with it and like kind of not happy with it yet. Um, but I know I want to have the image much bigger. So maybe I'll just put some placeholder things around here for now, because I don't like, I don't know. I don't like things that are kind of done half halfway. Like, I feel like you should either go, go further or like recede. <laughs> so, um, like the image, I wanted to take up more space so that it feels like it's more of the main focus for the screen. 
and that is how I feel like it it will look better <laughs> and like feel more prominent. So that's what I want to do here. Um, and then maybe I'll again use like the body text here. Yeah, and then I'll try to align it as much as I can. Those alignment tools come in handy. Mm -hmm. um, and then just like some, some form of using these, I guess, just keeping it around. And then maybe here, I'd like to use like our theme colors, which I just added um, using the plus so i would just go to the theme i think um i think there's also a way that you can add it into your design system um, but i use a mix of both just because i like ha having that flexibility so if you do add your colors into a design system which i think i do have um, your you go to that here. that panel right there yeah. there you go yeah, then there is a way that you can publish this system so that other people can use it as well and that is really important to do if you are sharing your work with a team, <laughs> like a design team, like you don't want everyone making their own one system and just going off uh, wherever. You wanna make sure that you are sharing like a standardized set of elements and colors and type to use. Yeah, so this is, I think there is a way that I can publish this library, um, which I'm not gonna do right now, but it's possible to do. Just wanted to share that. We had a question in the chat earlier that I remember that was, do you share the file that you work in when you are done with a project or do you just share like a video of the prototype for example um i think i share the file most often but i do sometimes share the video just just because i works. work with yeah i work with like a marketing team and i work with people that need to like they don't need to see that level of detail. So it depends on who I'm sharing with. Like that's probably the realistic answer. If it's like the, the dev team, they need all the styles, all the very specific details on spacing and alignment and like what icons I'm using. So I probably share the file with them. But then if it's yeah. the marketing team, maybe someone that is just looking for um, some key screens where they can share another video or do some sort of promotional content, then a video works just fine. And they don't always need like my design files but I may share it with them anyways in hopes that they will, will learn to use the design tools yeah. that I use. <laughs> I'm like I know, wouldn't that be great? trying to influence. Yeah, if everyone knew them. Yes. Yeah. Another yeah. great tool for that question is the share tab of, of Adobe XD. So we have design, oh, yes. prototype, and yeah. share. So once you're done with your designs, you can quickly create a link and choose you know, which flow to specify to be shared. Um, that's another great way. No one has to have Creative Cloud to open that link. Um, that's another great way to share, whether it's with a client or a developer or someone else. Yeah, I see that there is development. So like sharing with your dev team, or maybe if you're just presenting it and trying to get feedback from like your leadership uh, group, or maybe even user testing, and you need to show a prototype to someone who's actually going to walk through the screens and give you feedback um, and even like custom. So you can choose like how much control they have over your file, which is awesome. You, know, you don't want people like messing with things if you don't, if you don't trust what they're doing. So totally. yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So we're about halfway. So I'll let you continue on while I give a quick few reminders to everyone. Um, a couple things. We're on week two of the Daily Creative Challenge. So we have the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val, who is on the chat. Go say hello. Um, we have the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Claudie from um, Studio Print My Soul. And then we have the XD Daily Creative Challenge with our lovely Howard Pinsky as well. So check those out. If you are on YouTube right now, jump on over to Behance. That's where we are live on the chat. Um, you can jump in and say hello, ask a question to Joanna throughout the stream. And we are going to be finishing up. We went from sketching to low fidelity wireframing to um, soon high fidelity wireframes. And then shortly in about 30 or so minutes, we're going to do an artist spotlight. So stay tuned to see who that is. Um, yeah. So let's jump back into it. So we are on screen three of onboarding, it looks like. <laughs> There's a lot to Mass do. Carousel. And, and there is... Um... Yes, it's a new experience to talk about design as I am doing the design. So I just also want to shout out, like give a shout out to some of these resources that I tend to use um, 
to get user feedback, probably not at the stage of the, the process where I'm, you know, halfway done and barely started, <laughs> but uh, later on when we have like a working flow, I think it's important to get user feedback early on and often, you know, just get outside your, your office space or get outside of that mindset of where you've just been staring at your screen for like weeks and weeks on end. Um, you really need to talk to actual customers or even just people that have never seen it before and, you know, get them to actually use it and see how that experience is. So these are two of the resources I would recommend. Just because when it comes to user research, I found that there's a lot of logistics involved when it comes to recruiting people, making sure like things are compliant, like privacy wise with GDPR, uh, like paying people for their time. And there's just like a lot of structure that goes into place before you can actually get some feedback. And yeah, so usertesting.com is like a really easy resource where you can just uh, recruit people very fast. There's like a very simple way that they get paid and they do get paid on time, which is important too. And Respondent.io is like another one of these sites which can help you uh, recruit people which are probably more on the enterprise side. So depending on whether you're looking to reach um, more consumers or more of like an enterprise audience, I would say these two are some really good resources for user research. Yeah, I always found so much trouble recruiting people. <laughs> so that those yes. are great resources yeah. if you wanna do user research. You think you can just talk to anyone, but it's important to plan out your process for like who you're going to talk to. So sometimes it does take a lot of time to recruit the right audience. Totally. Um, and I guess some other like creative solutions, if you just um, are not finding any success with these resources, is that I've heard like going to a meetup group for that interest. So maybe you're looking for people that are interested in it, like a very narrow um in like a, a niche topic and you just can't find them on these sites and that's definitely a possibility you can go to a meetup group for that interest and say like i am building a solution to help solve problems for people like you like can you give me 10 minutes of your time and most people are willing to help you out so uh yeah there's like just different ways to approach this problem of getting feedback from people and you don't always have to go through sites like this either totally yeah um so from here i think I might need to jump ahead again, just because we are uh, a little bit low on time, but I did want to maybe have some way to add this, the cute snail, just because yeah. I like the snail fact. So we're gonna have some loading screen because at some point people will have to wait and we wanna make sure that they are entertained <laughs> in that process of waiting and not just like giving them nothing to do. So it's like a cute snail. And I love that Adobe XD um, has emoji support so easily because emojis are the best and they make everything better. So just gonna, align our cute snail and then maybe have some kind of loading message. Um, it's a lot shorter here. I don't know if it's too big. It might be just a little bit huge, <laughs> but there's maybe some sort of loading, which is funny because the snail is very, very slow. And I don't know if we want to remind people about that, but personally, <laughs> I like snails. <laughs> so That's a good point. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. It's um, a fast snail, this one. <laughs> He's also sleeping, <laughs> which is cute. Um, so again, using body copy here. If you like, did you know? And add our snail fact. Oh, where is it? Here. I think that's my new favorite random <laughs> fact. It's just great to share. If you ever feel like there's an awkward silence, just add in an animal fact. <laughs> I'm did sure. You know. <laughs> yes, did you know about snails? They can sleep for three years at a time <laughs> and then the awkwardness is gone. <laughs> um, yeah, so something like that. And then we may need to jump ahead for the sake of time, just because I want to move on um, and get to prototyping at some point. So just moving on here. Um, we did have our welcome screen, as we mentioned before. We probably have some kind of icon for the trash tag logo or symbol, something that represents the, the spirit of what we're doing here. And then from here, we want to quickly go into the um, set of onboarding screens, so just telling people what they can do. And we always want to give people an option to skip. Like I think just forcing people to go down one road is like very controlling. So it's like, how can we make sure that the user is always in the driver's seat and that they are the ones that have control? Uh, that is a UX heuristic, I think. So it's like a good rule of thumb uh, to keep in mind as you're designing whatever you're designing. So maybe totally having that agree. option to skip. Yeah, and then having these images here, which is, um, I think if I'm dragging in images from my desktop, Adobe XD actually masks the images directly, which is great. And 
yeah, I like having that time saving aspect. Um, I can just show you quickly. So if I have images open here, and then oh, here, I'm just like dragging in here. Wow. Yeah, it's not, that is great. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so much easier than having to, to scale things down or like crop them. And I did want to have the image take up this primary space in the background. So some effect that I wanted to try out was the object blur, which here you can choose oh, cool. background blur, or object blur, but I'm just going to like blur it out a little bit more because I like the way that looks and yeah, just like make it a little bigger. Yeah, so it looks kind of nice and modern. <laughs> so that is nice. just something I wanted to try out. Uh, I have this here and we like have this here too. Again, you notice how I am not naming things. It's, I'm running out of time, so I'm just doing this very quickly. You're good, uh, you're good. I don't want to have a stream that is like a week long, so <laughs> let's just keep it to a short, short stream. Um, yeah, just making this a little bit bigger so it fills up the background. And it feels, yeah, it feels fun, it feels nicer. And now we have our join the movement, so just telling people that they're not alone in their compassion and care for the world. They're part of like this larger group of people that also care about cleaning up the planet. Amazing. Yes. So now and that's the full onboarding, which is yeah. exciting. And now <laughs> I mean, we're on to yes. the meat of it. So collecting trash. We are jumping awesome. forward a little bit. And I think there was a period of time where I was thinking, okay, so is this feed a list of tasks or is it more like good things that other people have done because we could do a mixture of both you could either tell people um, these are the tasks that you can do and lay it out very simply and plainly or we could be more like celebrating um, the fact that there are other groups or other volunteers doing this or that and um, doing good in their corner of the world so I think my first thought was like leaning towards the news and celebration aspect just because I want it to be almost like a news feed um, where you're seeing like lots of updates over time. So with this, um, I was focused less on the task as aspect and more around um, this one being a news feed, like the homepage has a news feed. And then maybe when you're doing plus, that is when you're um, taking an image of any piece of trash and then adding in some um, additional data around the amount of trash and also what type of trash. And yeah, so this was like an initial concept that I had. Not sure how I feel about it yet, just because of like what we talked about before and keeping it simple to start with. So this is not keeping it simple. This is going like very deep, <laughs> like very, <laughs> very broad, very quickly, which might not be what we want to do. But um, it's but something you could test, thought. you yes. know, later on. Yeah. It's, it's cool to have it out here. Yeah. And then for the celebration, like this confirmation page, I wanted to add in like the sharing aspect, which is what I jotted down before here. Like how can we make this so it's more, um, social, more like a ripple effect of me doing this one good thing and then like sharing it with my friends or like my network and saying, like, oh, you, you guys can all contribute too. That's, an, that's something that I wanted to share. And I think we also had um, a comment from someone about tagging people here at this page. And I think that yeah. is a great suggestion. So we having also had some way to tag people. Yes. Yeah, Silene on the chat just recently um, had the suggestion of what happens if the place that you visited is already clean. So is there a way to celebrate mm. and continue to keep it clean? So this could be a similar message that you could reuse for that. Yeah, I would love to have some way to like adopt a park or like, it's almost like yeah. those highway adoption programs. It's like, oh, how can you take, take care of this thing over time and, you know, make sure it's staying healthy and clean. Like I like, I like that aspect of like, everyone is doing their own small part. Yeah. So totally. that is a good suggestion. I will also add that to my list. Of things up here. I really like that. Adopt a park. Yeah. Like anyone can adopt a certain a certain maybe place. Like keep place. Oh, maybe keep it clean. Keep it clean from here. Okay. And then, oh, I have a lot of other screens I was thinking about. So already at this point, I'm like regretting because I'm thinking that I'm doing way too much and I haven't talked to anyone about it. <laughs> I'm just like going wild with the designs. Uh, but this is how my brain normally works. And so I was thinking again about the, the idea of meetups and how we can incorporate that aspect. So this is almost like a meetup group. Maybe we can organize a meetup somehow. Um, I know at Microsoft, there's like a group of people that care about sustainability for all of Microsoft. And there's like many, many thousands of employees that are part of this group. So maybe there's something that we can do on Earth Day or maybe 
you know, something we can do to volunteer when we have spare time. So I would love to have a way to incorporate like the ability to organize a cleanup, but this is very far from MVP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would not so for, suggest doing this like this <laughs> intensely um, if you're doing um, like a proof of concept. So for those of us, for those of you who are just joining us, what we're working on right now, so it's an app called Trash Tag. So Joanna has been going through the full foundation of her research and mind mapping and sketching, which we covered yesterday. And then today we're going into prototyping um, and designing those high fidelity wireframes um, or high fidelity designs. And Joanna, can you quickly touch on a summary of what the app does, just for those of who, those of everyone who's just jumped in? For yeah, so it is a trash tag is a crowdsourcing sustainability app, and it connects people that are looking to help clean up the planet with people that need data to help keep the planet clean. And so there's two nonprofits that I was learning more about and talking to over the past several years. Uh, one of them is Ocean Cleanup. The other is Project BB. And both of them have some need for, for people, like volunteers, like you and me, just regular people to come in and either take images of litter in different environments or label those pieces of litter, because that is the data that they need in order to improve their, their technology, whether they are building um, solar powered vessels to move along the oceans to collect pieces of plastic, or if they're building like a beach robot, which is identifying cigarette butts, um, they all need more images and they need those images to be labeled in order to make sure their technology actually works. So that is a need that they have and that's something that they can't do alone. And so that's why we're using crowdsourcing to break down that task of needing maybe several thousand images and, and like sort of breaking that down so that every person only needs to collect maybe 10 or so images. Awesome. Yeah, so now we are on, we went through onboarding. <laughs> what section are we working on right now? Uh, we are going through. <laughs> Um, the collections. So this one is probably Ooh. like going very far into the, the social aspect of like pre-pandemic or post-pandemic when you can gather together in larger groups of people. And I was just thinking that, you know, it'd be fun to have like a weekend cleanup with a group of volunteers or maybe like feel connected to other people that also care about sustainability. And yeah, you just make your own cleanup or maybe like a nonprofit can make a event for people to gather together and it'd just be a lot of fun. So I wasn't thinking about COVID as I was making this because it was pre-COVID, <laughs> but yeah, that's just something that maybe as um, the pandemic conditions improve and we're able to gather together more often, um, yeah, it'd be fun to meet up with your friends this way and also do something good for your neighborhood. Awesome. You can always do virtual cleanups. Everyone <laughs> goes separately. Mm, yes. Uh, everyone has like a GoPro on their head and you just yeah. like, <laughs> take a stream. Oh, what, what a world doing. that would be. Yeah. <laughs> The very last screen, just because I mentioned I really wanted to use animal icons as a way to protect privacy, but also make it uh, more fun so that maybe you can be on a team with other animals uh, because my, my brain's just like that. <laughs> you may maybe be on like a fish team for and you can call yourself the blue minnows. And so this is your profile page. And I imagine like the fish icon would go here and then you can also have some kind of activity feed or some kind of history. Um, of all the pieces of trash that you've helped pick up or like the pieces of trash that you've helped to take an image of that you've sent to a nonprofit and actually done some good. So yeah, it's just something that was on my mind for the profile page. And we can add the, add the fishy here. So my fish. Again, these fonts or these icons are from Font Awesome. They have a lot, a lot of icons to choose from. And then the icons I was using for the nav bar are from this dribble free icon set. And I was just picking out some that seemed to match with what I have. Um, and very quickly building this out from here. We have another Fishy. compliment in the chat from Jay. I really want to see another live stream with Joanna and her box. Oh. Yes, yeah, we'll that will next time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the thing with um, creating teams of animals is then now you can have competition. So we talked a little bit about gamification on day one. And then the idea of that is like, how can you make trash tag more fun, more social, and then more motivating to be a part of every day? So we wanna encourage that level of engagement. So we have some kind of competition among like people that are, you know, groups of fishes against groups of birds or like against groups of frogs. 
I think that'd be a lot of fun. And then you aren't just like doing solo, like, you know, person A against person B, uh, but you can be part of a team. I think that's, yeah, that's like something that I enjoy doing. Um, let's see, so from here, you can probably add different images to these, um, this news feed, but I'm actually looking back on this I was like regretting that I made this because I don't think it's the right decision. I think I was going way too complex into the trash chair collection and expecting people to go and do all this work and like do all this thinking about like, oh, is this piece of trash a cigarette butt versus like a piece of glass versus like a piece of plastic. There's like a lot of choices here and I don't like having so much complexity for an MVP. So I think I'm probably going to like take a step back and think about how to approach this in a way that is more simple. And for the sake of time, again, I will zoom forward just a little bit more and like talk about um, afterward some of the findings that I had um, as I talked to the founder of the BB project. So um, it was founded by these two guys in the Netherlands. And as I heard their story, I thought it was really cool how they just saw a problem in their neighborhood. And they're like, why can't we do something about it? There's like a level of being proactive, but a solution that I really, I really admire. Um, not just like to sit there and complain or like feel sad about the state of the way things are, but actually do something about it. I think that is so important. And so I was also thinking about as I was talking to him, like, what are the things that motivate people? So maybe helping to make sure that people feel like um, that the other person is grateful for what they're doing. So maybe the nonprofit can um, send some kind of thank you note or like give some sort of appreciation, I think that would help make the user feel more motivated. And we also want to point them to a sense of like a higher purpose, maybe some kind of mission as to what they're doing because they are doing an act of kindness. And we know that doing acts of kindness and like giving actually makes people feel happier. So that is also something that is motivating. And then, yeah, I mentioned before like animal facts or memes for loading screens, that'd just be awesome. I just like animal facts. Or maybe we can even do something like a cool stream of fishes. <laughs> like you go from yeah. the, one screen to another. Uh, yeah, just like lots of ideas, but like trying to rein it back. So you can like build some, actually build something and have it work in the real world and not go too crazy at the first time. So again, like I thought more about the logo and then just because it's a trash tag and on, on Instagram, there's like literally like the hashtag. So I was inspired by that same thing just because the trash tag uh, name came from that viral challenge called the trash tag challenge. So I wanted to incorporate like some kind of hashtag symbol into the icon and, and yeah, just stay, stay close to the source of where the name came from. But I'm also that. not like attached to the name trash tag just because the word trash is in it. And maybe people don't like, like that association. There's like some kind of negative connotations with the word. So if you're in the live chat, uh, feel free to give any name suggestions. I'm, I'm very open to other names here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good call. Does anyone in the chat have any good name ideas for this app? So taking photos of trash, detailing out what those, that trash is. Mm. Let's hear your thoughts. I bet you we can have, have some more ideas. But I, I personally like Trash Tag. I think it's very clear. <laughs> You know, and then it relates directly to that challenge that happened on Instagram. So mm -hmm. I like it. Okay, so then from here, um, just adding some minor adjustments to the uh, onboarding flows. And so because this one is taking a good photo of trash, I, my mind was just going to like, what does a photo look like? Like when you take a photo, I just think of like these, these uh, things on the corner. So I was like adding these things because that was what came to mind. So just making sure that the, the point is very clear. Uh, and then maybe adding the details about the picture. But again, I'm not like super attached to this idea just because I don't want to go too complex from the start. And then verification, like maybe we could have this. So from this angle, I was thinking there are some people that aren't mobile. So maybe they can't physically go to a location and take images of trash, but there are other ways that they can help out. So um, from what I learned from the nonprofit is that not only do they need images of trash, like sometimes they already have lots and lots of images because they attach cameras to different riverheads or they have cameras already attached to these robots. They just need people to verify that the image is what it is. So um, the algorithm is making these guesses over time. Like it's not a 100% accurate guess. They're just kind of like, oh, you know, we think it's likely to be this. And so they need a person to take a look at that image and to confirm like, yes, it is this object or no, it is not. So that is something that people can do regardless of whether they're mobile or not. 
I love that. And you mentioned this yesterday, thinking about that inclusivity with this app. Yes. People aren't necessarily able to get to a place to pick up trash. So a way to incorporate them and help them feel good too and contribute. I yeah. And then, okay, just explaining why we're doing this is like, oh, it started from the story. And I think people like stories, um, like stories are more memorable rather than just telling them what to do. So yeah, just like trying to point to the story of Trash Tag and how this started as a movement. Like I wanted to include that in some, some shape or form. So I have that here. And then I have my cute snail again, like telling you, oh, did you know a snail can sleep for two years at a time? That's my loading Amazing. screen. Yeah. So everyone, we have a few minutes left until our artist spotlight. So stay tuned for that. We'll jump in spotlight an artist and go through their work. Um, so just a few minutes until that. Yeah, so I just wanted to point out some other resources and also give a shout out to Project BB. So this is a nonprofit that I've been talking to um, and just hearing more about what they're doing. And I also plan to work with them a little bit after this project is over just to see how we can like keep sharing ideas and see how I can help them with the cause that they're doing. So if you ever want to learn more about Project BB and what they're doing, feel free to check out their websites. And I also have this article, which is called How to Ask Better Questions. And these are questions I've been thinking about over time uh, throughout my, my journey as a designer, which is not that long, but just like, I think it's so important to be able to keep asking questions, whether it's through design critique or whether you're working with people that are non-designers, you know, like how can you reframe the problem and bring together like the different skill sets of the people that you're working with? And also keep in mind that you're always looking at things kind of from a biased perspective. So how can you um, sort of, get around that bias and try to approach the same problem from a new lens. So these are questions I put together around framing the problem, around research, around um, reducing bias or trying to make the product more inclusive, um, things around best practices or even like developing the brand. And these are just questions that I found personally helpful. Hopefully they're also useful for you. Can add this to your, I, I'm sure this is already on your list of Medium articles, right? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes there's just too many, too many <laughs> lists. And yeah, I just wanted to give, give this one, um, yeah, another, another shout out to different resources because I collect a lot of resources. <laughs> this is awesome. So I also talked to like friends as I'm working on this project, just because, yeah, I want to have people to bounce off ideas with, like people that come from different backgrounds as me that are non-designers, like, I asked them like, oh, so what makes a game more fun? And the answer that I got back is like some aspect of variety. So these people are gamers. They're like, oh, you know, something that makes it uh, feel more like there's something different every day, maybe some way to compete or challenge a friend, which I mentioned before. Um, maybe some aspect of friendly competition or teamwork. And yeah, so I just wanted to jot these things down as I was talking to different people and then I was also thinking like, what's, what adds value at the end of the day? Like what is adding customer value to the two audiences that we have? So we have the environmentalist, the person that's taking these photos and we already are doing a bunch of things to make sure that, or like I listed a bunch of things that might make them feel happier and more satisfied with the experience. But on the other side of this, there's also that nonprofit who at the end of the day needs accurate labeled data. So if there's some way that we can reward accuracy I think that would help the nonprofit or that group that is receiving the data get more value out of trash tag. So just keep in mind that there are two audiences here um, and what is valuable for both of these audiences. And usually if we think about it long enough, we can find like a win-win solution for both sides. That's an awesome point. Yeah, I think I think that's really important that that feedback loop in a way, you know, um, and calling out those two different audi audiences that you're designing for. Yeah, you shouldn't neglect one for the other. <laughs> like sometimes totally. there's like a tendency, oh, you know, like I feel closer to one side than the other. You just imagine yourself there. But yeah, there's two sides and then you're like balancing. Yeah. Um, so I rethought the homepage after, like I talked about the previous homepage, which had way too much stuff going on. And like, this is just like a feed of news stories, not that useful. Um, or maybe it's not the most important thing that I wanted to start off with. So I was thinking more about like that, that feedback that I got around or like these, these notes that I took around, you know, how can we make it more, more fun, you know, more variety. So I thought about the idea of quests just because I've been playing some RPGs and there's always like side quests that you can do where you get sent on a mission to do like a certain um, 
like a sequence of tasks. So I was thinking, okay, how can we incorporate that aspect into our app? So maybe we can show some kind of metric about around like the number of cigarette butts that are being collected or like the amount of people that you're working with. Then you can get that social aspect and you can feel like you're part of a larger team. And you also have a goal in mind. Uh, for me, I am super goal oriented. I think mean, like I set too many goals and then I'm like journaling every day, like, okay, how am I making progress in like this or that or that? And I hope there are people out there that are like me and I'm not alone. <laughs> so I just added this uh, weekly quest goal here so that you can see like, okay, like what is my progress so far um, and what should I do next? So having that very clearly laid out, I think will help the the tiger, you know, understand what they need to do and then also feel a sense of accomplishment as they're making progress. So from so you, here, you bring up goals, which is the perfect segue because before you mentioned loving lettering, which brings us to our artist spotlight today. So a quick drum roll as I share the artist that we're going to spotlight today. And here we go. So the artist that we're spotlighting today is Gretel. So hello, if you're on the chat, um, we are going to be walking through a little bit of your work, hyping you up, checking out what you're doing. So Joanna, which piece of work do you want to first jump into? What's your favorite based on looking at this? I have the, the bottom left corner, this which one? is actually, yes, it's a set of challenges that Gretel made in 2018, which seems like ages oh, ago, beautiful. but it's actually not that long ago. And first of all, I love lettering because it's so expressive. Like it's also imperfect because I think for what I do in a lot of design, like you care about having pixel perfection and everything is like straight corners and like exactly aligned. And this yeah. is like the opposite of that, you know, it's like freehand, maybe you're doing things with paint or, or on paper and you're able to be very rough and very sketchy. And I love that sense of like imperfection. <laughs> like, I don't think yeah. design has to be perfect or like art has to be perfect at all. It's just, you know, human. Yeah. Even like these almost like splatters in a way, like the, the text yes. is so beautifully painted. And then mm -hmm. that splatter, it just adds that, yeah, that really nice feel. This is amazing. Yeah. I love these colors also. Those are some of my, those neutrals, you know, like very nature-like. I'm a very right. visual thinker. So I like how she's like emphasizing certain words or like making sure to to focus more on one word over another. And so your your brain, as you're like seeing this, you're like chunking the words together in a way that makes more sense. And that's just totally. how I think. So I love lettering for this reason too. And I love the photos like of your notebook too, you know, doing the lettering on this. It just adds that context. You know, it's not just like the final end product and image of that. It's also you know, this is the notebook that it was that it was drawn in. Yeah, and I guess this is more personal, but I also uh, really enjoy being able to write, like these are Bible verses. So I, I love being able to write Bible verses on like different sticky notes or like different pieces of paper. Sometimes I even use origami paper because I just have a lot of origami paper. And, and yeah, like just to be able to think about um, the Bible and think about what God's words mean for me. Uh, it's been like a very peaceful thing to do during the pandemic and something that I really enjoy. So like this last verse, for example, it talks about like love always protects, always trusts, always hopes and always perseveres. I know that's from uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And it's just talking about how like God's love is so different than how people love. And I know this verse is used very commonly for like marriage ceremonies, but I think there's always that difference between like how people love, which is kind of waiting for reciprocation or like kind of like guessing intentions versus how God's love is for us, which is like sacrificial and always giving. So I just totally. like to think about these things and yeah, think about what it means for my own life. Yeah. And Greta like perfectly blended the, you know, the style as well as the verse, which I love in this lettering, this lettering piece here. Like you said, it almost does look like a, like a wedding invitation, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I would use it. It's mm. awesome. All right. Let's jump to another one. Which one is up? Should we try something? Looks like there's a sticker here. Yeah, she had one if you go down, like let your light shine, which I thought was really cool because it was a 3D piece and I, I like 3D art. So I think she started with a sketch. And again, this is based on a verse in Matthew um, about like letting your light shine for other people. And so she started off with just a sketch. I love how she shows her whole process here. It's, yeah. Yeah. 
very, very good for a portfolio, <laughs> you know, like best practice. Uh, but then, yeah, she uses 3D tools to render it. And this is like amazing. I love this. Whoa. Um, you just have to see it in real life almost. Mm. This is awesome. Yeah, she adds like layers of, yeah, I'm curious about the tool too, but it's cool that she adds like layers of it over time. So you can see how she started and how she's adding color and thinking about like the colors and how they interact together. Wow, this is awesome. Look at this one. So 3D render of the final sketch. So adding in that color and that light aspect, you can really see how this would translate to real life, you know? And then a scene set up. And it looks like this is almost like different stages. Yeah, I love how she just used. like cut those together in one image. It's, it's so cool to yeah. see. Yeah. So this is the final one on the right. Oh, and there's a video. Ooh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that is nice. That's yeah. awesome. It's almost like, yeah, it's the full process. It almost feels like it's like getting lit up, right? Mm -hmm. Like from a from a sketch or an early rendering all the way to that final version. This is great. Yeah, these are like gorgeous effects. Yeah, I love, and then pr love and this. Print. Mm -hmm. And on your wall, so many different <laughs> options. All right, let's do one more. Which one should we check out? Uh, any or I think the one you showed before, um, maybe like the second, second. This one? The second one below that? The stickers, note yeah. to self stickers. Man, I need more stickers on my <laughs> laptop. <laughs> maybe I'll have to get some of these. All right, so it looks like Greta released a sticker pack featuring inspirational and motivational quotes called Note to Self. These are beautiful. Oh, and then they're pasted in different places. Again, I just love the flow of the letters. Um, and especially with these phrases, they're like motivational. So take things as they come, move forward, be chill and know, um, grow through <laughs> what you go through. Grow through what you go through. That could be a tongue twister, couldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I think these are good things to keep in mind um, during the pandemic. I don't think we realized how, you know, it's like being isolated is really hard and people need to feel connected. They need to feel love and they need to feel like kindness from other people. So I just looking looking at these things really encourages me to reach out to other people and just make sure I'm as generous as I can be to like the people that I love and the people that I'm around. Um, yeah, just to like not take these things for granted. Yeah. And even thinking about this work, you know, Greta clearly thought about context. Like when would you want to see a statement like this? If you have a mm. sticker, if you put it on your water bottle, you know, you never know who's going to see that. Or if it's on your laptop, someone's working next to you. Um, so I love that, that intentional thought about the context too. So making this thing a sticker in the first place mm -hmm. is really awesome to see. Yeah. It's so important to keep these things in mind because I think you know, we have so many distractions around us all the time, whether it's like the notifications on our phone or like checking your inbox and there's like, you know, 2,000 2, like messages. Yeah. You're like, oh, I just like want to shut my laptop and run away. Um, totally. Yeah, just like keeping your mind on the things that are most important or the things that you know are truth in your life are, you know, it's what has helped me find like a sense of peace. It's like reading the Bible and like understanding that this is God's truth for me. Um, at least for me, like very personally, it's something that's helped me find like a sense of calm during the pandemic when there's so much uncertainty. Totally. Amazing job, Gretel. If you yeah. haven't checked out Gretel's work before, <laughs> head on over to her Behance page mm -hmm. here. We just went through a few beautiful, beautiful pieces. And now we're going to get back into Joanna's work. So finishing up our prototype. All right, so we are trying to go through um, some iterations of our home screen. So I was saying before that that feed of different news stories of, you know, what volunteer groups are doing or what other people are doing to help clean up. I think, you know, that's nice, but I don't think it's the most important thing to focus on at first. And so I was inspired by quests that you can do in games like RPG games where you can, you know, just do a very focused mission for a short amount of time. And so I think having that focus um, understanding of what I need to do next 
um, is probably the thing that is most important to surface on the home page. So I have quests here. And then I also put events on the other side of that because maybe, you know, as time allows and as the pandemic restrictions allow, we can go and see other people again and like go and volunteer together. So I wanted to keep the aspect of meetups maybe for the, the future, but um, I know I wanted to focus more on quests. And so maybe after I go and see my weekly quest, I'm able to click into it, get a more detailed view. Um, I can see that it's from Project BB and maybe learn more about this nonprofit and what they're doing. Uh, but there's also like that social aspect. Um, I want to include some way for people to come together and maybe like add comments here and like, how am I doing in my in my corner of the world cleaning up cigarette butts? And you can say like, oh, like I finished something today or like I finished my mission for this week. And you can sort of celebrate that, not just within the, the UI of the app, but also with other users. Yeah, I love this concept of quests. You know, even just the name of it, the <laughs> quest within an app, it does add this like element of, I need to go and go on this quest now. Yeah, it's like progress and accomplishment and also competition. So I like yeah. those these kind of things coming together. Totally. Um, so from here, I, I actually think we can probably cut this screen so we don't really need a way to submit the type of trash. Like I want to keep it as simple as possible and yeah, focus on maybe you know, very specific things that a nonprofit actually needs and not try to force a user to think so much about like, oh, what category of trash am I like putting this image in or like, oh, how much... Like, is it like one cigarette butt or is it like 15? It's just like a lot of thinking. I don't want to start with that right away. And yes, again, we have the, the sharing screen, which I mentioned before. And then over time, I just want to show like, oh, there can be progress. You know, it's so nice to see progress after you've worked on something. So this is what like the progress bar might look like. You can also see like some kind of activity feed with other people in your area that have maybe tagged some items or found some um, images of litter. I think it'd be just like nice to see that level of updates over time. So it's not just a static screen. So Sarah asked in the chat, something related to artboard size. So when you're designing for mobile, do you typically, what, what size do you go for? Mm, I would use either what is the most common or what is, um, what your company recommends, <laughs> which varies. So I made this several years ago. And I think the most common um, artboard size back then was iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. So that was what I was using at the time. Um, but it really, I don't know, I think it varies depending on what is most common at the time or what totally. your target demographic is and what they're using. So there are yeah. statistics out there. You can probably just go to a search engine and search for this. Yeah. Yeah, because that screen size matters, right, for, for when people view that. I mean, if the yeah. app is developed, it'll be responsive to the screen, screen sizes. But as you design, thinking about that, that target. Yeah, and also what's easier to build, because this is something that I learned about more recently, but between um, designing for like an iPhone or Android, Android actually has a lot of different versions for screen sizes. So um, on the development side, it's actually more complex. And yeah, versus for iPhone, it's like everything is standardized in some way. So you can just design one for like build once and it sort of adjusts for other um, other versions of the phone. So there is like some difference in implementation complexity there that you may want to consider. And you just need to talk to your dev team and yeah, sort of have like some collaboration you because you need to hand off at some point. You can't do it all on your own. And if you can, you're amazing and you are a unicorn, <laughs> but not all of us can be unicorns. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, we have about 10 minutes left in this stream. So it looks like we have pretty much full fidelity designs <laughs> yeah. here which is awesome mm -hmm. um and this looks like that leaderboard social aspect tell yes. us a little bit more we are jumping forward maybe a few weeks into the future so we have more time to talk to customers more time to talk to our stakeholders and just understand the, the requirements for the app because they are changing and uh, one thing that i mentioned before was, was like oh how can we have you know, groups of people comp competing against each other or maybe like individuals competing against each other. I think that would add some sense of motivation, like that factor into the app. And so I was thinking, okay, maybe we have the leaderboard here, but then we also want to include some kind of thank you so that people feel like they are appreciated. And I like to feel like I'm appreciated at work. So why would someone else, you know, maybe just imagining this app is for me because it's my passion project and it's okay in this context. Like I want to have the the Project BB founder maybe come here and say something nice. Um, like, you know, thanks to your help, our technology can do blah, blah, blah. Um, and then from here, if I'm reading this as a user, I can feel like, wow, you know, like what I'm doing in my weekend, in my 
15 minutes um, that I take on a walk every other day is like actually doing something to contribute to the betterment of the world. And that is like a very satisfying feeling that has nothing to do with money, um, but it's more about like, you know, life satisfaction. So I like having that positive that reinforcement. Yeah. <laughs> And then down here, you can be like, oh, you know, like this Kiwi beat me. Like, how can I do better next week? So I like having this, this leaderboard here to let me know, like, how well am I doing compared to other users of this app? Totally. So anyone on the chat, if you have questions for Joanna, we have about 10 minutes left. So now is your time to ask. Um, and it looks like what yeah. will be going through next on here? I do have a question if... Um, People are willing to help as I think about this, like how might we make trash tag more social? So we talked about different ways that we're doing it with sharing and competition or maybe like meetups, but maybe there, there's probably lots of things I haven't thought about. So if you have any ideas, feel free to share them with me. Um, I think like that social aspect of technology is something that we could focus more on to make it more exciting and more engaging or just more meaningful. So yeah, that's something I'm thinking about. Yeah, and I think you know, with, with people in the chat, like this is working with a real nonprofit. So any suggestions you make could actually become real. Mm -hmm. um, so just add a little incentive there. Let us know any of your suggestions. So Megan in the chat said, is there currently a reward system for this app that we have in here? So I think we, we have a little bit of more like verbal reward, but I don't know if we have something built in other than leaderboards, right? Yeah, I don't think we have any anything like that yet. Um, maybe maybe you could elaborate on what you had in mind <laughs> and that would help. Yeah. yeah, let us know if you have any ideas for a reward system, what that reward that maybe you would want um, if you were to go pick up trash, would it be mm -hmm. financial reward, more of a, a badge or a you know word of affirmation? What would be that reward that you would look for? Mm -hmm. um, and then I wanted to quickly I mean, prototype mode is something that I know Adobe XD does really well, and we might not have enough time to go through all the screens, but what you can do is go to this prototype tab and you can start linking together the screens really quickly. And I, I like how it starts calling this flow one, just in case you have multiple flows on the same artboard, you can um, string together different prototypes within the same file, and you can share those with like different partners that you're working with. So that's just something that's very convenient. And you can also see how they have different options for effects here um different types of transitions i haven't played around with all of them but i think like the audio and speech ones are like less common than i've seen so i think it's cool to be able to have like that level of flexibility in case you need that and yeah from there you can just go on and share share that i think you can play it and yeah nice. look at that yes so fast and it was that prototype. quick <laughs> yes yeah, you yeah. mentioned a couple of those different transitions. Voice prototyping is something in XD that is super fun. Um, if you have the chance to check it out, um, designing for voice, and you can also, like you're doing audio playback, you can have some sounds play. So maybe if someone picked up, um, you know, or identified a, a water bottle, it could have a crinkle noise or something. <laughs> it can get really oh. fancy. We can use animal noises. And that'd be a lot could of use fun. Animal noise. There you <laughs> yeah. Go. yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess, like overall, I just wanted to to summarize by saying, like, you know, we always feel like our expectation for design is like you should go from point A to point B, and it should be very linear, or you you might not be making too many pivots along the way. But the reality is, as maybe you've seen in my process, is like what B is or what the north star is is always moving around. So you need to be conscious um, of how that target is moving based off talking to your customers, talking to your stakeholders, talking to the members of your team, and just understanding what those constraints are. Because from there, then you can make like lots and lots of different pivots and you should feel okay that, you know, you're not just going like in a straight line, but that you are making those adjustments. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I mean, things constantly evolve, designs constantly evolve. Um, so that's a really good point to keep, keep that in mind that things keep moving. Mm -hmm. And one book that I would recommend is called The Lean Startup. So it's approaching um, design more like how a startup might approach design just because startups have limited resources and limited time and a lot of like competition from other people trying to do similar things. Like they're trying to break into a space for the first time. And I think that's very hard um, for any group to do. So kind of keeping that mindset, I think will make your skills as a designer like more robust and more flexible. 
You are the resource goddess here. <laughs> you have so many resources, which is really helpful. For those who didn't catch it earlier, Joanna has a Medium page and she very amazingly lists it out and organize them for you. So if you're new to UX or want to really enhance your workflow, go check it out. Um, it's super awesome. She highlighted a few different articles in there. Mm-hmm. That's a great resource. It's almost like a book, right? Like with different chapters. Yes, I also <laughs> have some self-published books in case you you like longer things. But I think because I have a short attention span, I also want to get ideas out. Like I want them to be a little bit slower than a tweet, but a little bit faster than a full book. <laughs> I think like blogging is like a good in between for those things because you do need time to process information and not say the first thing that comes to mind. Um, but sometimes if you wait too long, like books can also become outdated because the world changes so fast, especially when it comes to technology and things that are always like shifting and in motion. So blogging is like my happy in between for that. And yeah, I love being able to share resources with people. I love like being able to mentor younger designers if they have any questions. So yeah, feel free to reach out if you have questions. I'm all like available on LinkedIn for like one-off things and I'll try to do my best to share it because yeah, that's what I was uh, blessed enough to have when I was entering design back in college. And I just want to be able to give back. Amazing. And Voodoo yeah. Val posted Joanna's medium link in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. There's also <laughs> other places where could people come and see your work? Uh, I am on dribble. I am on Behance. I am on Instagram at Pixotato. Um, I think I have my, my link here back in my, my earliest intro screen. Um, so Pixo Tato is like condensing two words like pixel because designers are always working with pixels and like that's just what we enjoy doing. Also the word potato because I think potatoes are like the most versatile food ever. <laughs> you can like enjoy it in so many different forms, right? There's like fried potatoes, like mashed potatoes, with like different different cuts of potatoes and it's so enjoyable. So I, I love identify that name. As like potato. I think it's like positive things. Right? Yeah, I love mm-hmm. that. Awesome. So we covered a ton yesterday and today. We went through all the way from foundational research and mind mapping and sketching all the way to low fidelity wireframes and high fidelity designs. So we've covered a lot about the Trash Tag app. Um, Joanne has been working with a, a nonprofit on this. And so all of these learnings that we had today will hopefully come to real life one day. Um, So thank you everyone for joining. We have a couple more minutes. So if there's any questions that you have remaining, definitely let us know. Um, Joanna, we listed a few of her um, places you can go follow her work. And then as always, we're running daily creative challenges. And so if you want to go check those out, we have the um, Photoshop daily creative challenge with um, Voodoo Val, Illustrator daily creative challenge with Claudie, And then, of course, we have the um, XD Daily Creative Challenge. So thank you, everyone. Happy Tuesday, and we'll see you next time on Adobe Live.